Amen. Okay, welcome everyone. We're going to continue with the worship, but before we go there, um, let's just coordinate a little bit. Shanae. Okay, so it's a big welcome from my side to the 21st year of the Watchman School of Prayer here in Cape Town. So uh, we are, after two years of COVID, it's so wonderful be, to be back at Rockland Center. And uh, so wonderful to all of you that are here. Uh, the numbers are not up there yet, but there's a lot of other people here uh, in the spirit that we don't know yet. So they are all coming to work, witness what God will do in your life this week. So uh, also to our online viewers, most welcome to you. And um, yeah, let's have a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord. Official welcomings later. For now, it's only declaring that the Lord Jesus is here. And uh, that we are calling everyone. And, and, and when I blow this uh, ram's horn, it is uh, like a call to your spirit to awaken and to stand to attention because the King of Kings is in the house, okay? So this is a declaration we make when we blow this as a sign of God's presence and calling whoever is listening unto the blood of Jesus and into his presence. Okay, that's what we will do now. And then from there, uh, Trevino is going to lead us in worship. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, 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 yes, L
I'm pressed but not crushed. I'm pressed but not crushed. Persecuted, not abandoned. Shut down, it's not destroyed. I'm blessed beyond the curse. And his promise will endure. And his joy is gonna be my spirit. Though the sorrow may last for the night, his joy comes in the morning. Just sing, yes, Lord.
to dance it. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who cares. You turn mourning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who cares. You turn grave into cottage. You turn praise into goddess. You turn bones into high. Oh yeah. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who cares. You're the only one who cares. And see, there's nothing more. Your voice. I 
Give thanks for the goodness of God. When Moses asked the Lord to show him his glory, the Lord said eventually, I will hide in the cleft of the rock. And when you pass, when I pass by you, you will see my goodness. So well, let us sing this song again, being reminded of the goodness of God, not only for what He has done for us, but He is good. His very character is good. His nature is good. He is good. Let us worship Him. Love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails all my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake Till I lay my head I will see all the goodness of God All my life 
Cause all my life you have been faithful Yes, Lord, all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am in I will sing of the goodness of God So you have led me through the fire, darkest nights. You are close like no one. Know you as a father, oh yes, I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the kingdoms of God. All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am breathing Oh, I will see all the goodness of God See, your goodness is running your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything, yes, Lord. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness, God. Jesus, thank you, Lord. We give you glory, the glory that is only due for you. We thank you that your goodness is running after us. You are chasing us in this evening with your goodness, Lord. We praise your name. You are our good God. We don't have to seek you, Lord. Tonight we have been found by you. Your goodness is running after us. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. Indeed, you have been faithful all of our days. Faithful faithfulness. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you. You may be seated. Now, as I said before, this is um, the 21st year that we are having the Watchman School of Prayer. The last two years, we couldn't be at this venue because of the streaming and the shift we had to make as a people of God from a physical to a digital platform by force, I must say. <laughs> but now we are back here. We are in the privilege of and the just the honor of being able to gather together as faithful friends and people of God is such a privilege for us now, more than ever before. So I want to thank you all for coming. 
And I want to thank those that are online that is joining us. May the Lord really bless you. Wherever you may be this week, wherever you find yourself standing, sitting, walking or talking, that you will be just aware of the presence of the Lord with you. And so um, with that, I want to welcome a few people here tonight. This indeed um, is a special week. Uh, we started the Watchman School of Prayer way back in 2002, and now we are sitting in 2022. And <laughs> it's been a long road. And we have seen year in, year out, we have seen some amazing things, what the Lord has done in these four days that we are together. So I want to encourage you tonight, even those that are online, that you will take this time out for yourself. That you will buy it out for yourself. Buying it out, saying it will cost me something, but I want this. And so I want to encourage you really to take special care of this week. Um, we have specially made an arrangement with ESCOM to interrupt our sessions from time to time. <laughs> and it's simply to test our faith, really. And the Lord says he will work everything together for good for those who love him. So even the load shedding will be a blessing eventually. <laughs> eventually, that is. Uh, so, um, yes, and then I've arranged, especially with uh, Telcom, that you, will, uh, that you don't have very good reception here. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But there's a holy purpose for that. So that you can be a little bit disconnected from the surroundings that you are used to uh, in order to focus on the Lord. So there's a very holy reason for all of these things. We even had a lady this morning that phoned us and said, can she still join the school at Rocklands? Uh, but she wants to come tomorrow. I said, no, 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 no. No, no, we can't do that. You, we can't do that. But you guys have been registering for a while and you've been focusing your heart on it. You have focused your spirit on it. You have prepared yourself spiritually and you have come with an expectation and I believe God wants to meet your expectation. Whatever that is, and it's probably not the same for any of us, but that the Lord will meet your expectation. There were some sessions in the past year in this room that we had in the evenings with the worship where the Lord will just come and touch the people. Just without them even knowing. We had a man just sitting over here with a an, uh, with, uh, an, uh, pain in his backside for many years, and he just stood here, he stood up with the pain, and he started worshiping the Lord. And as he got up at the end of the session to walk out, he discovered he didn't have any pain in his back anymore. And the Lord touched him under the worship with nobody praying for him. And so it is that I want to encourage you, let your expectation be what it is, but also let God be open for God's expectation for you. Because he wants to surprise you this week. And it's not only because of you, as we will hear a bit later. It's because of his kingdom. It's because of his presence going from here and to the nations. And so God always equips us for a purpose. Yes. And so I want to welcome a few very special people here tonight. And you will not believe this, it's the first year, I think, that we have a special delegate who is one year old and one who is 88 years old, <laughs> if I am correct. And please forgive me if my age number is wrong, because I can only count to 87, then I finished. Number 88. 88. I say, praise the year. There she is. <laughs> Welcome, Auntie Nora. Welcome. <laughs> Hello. 
Halleluja. Amen. Amen, Taninora. Amen. 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 She knows how to zip it also. Okay. And then the, the one that is one year old, Matthew. Can you show us who's Matthew, please? Matthew. Matthew is sleeping. Okay, okay, Matthew, we forgive you this time. Tomorrow morning we want to see your face. Okay, welcome to everyone. We have people from other nations here as well. Before I get to them, let me just uh, say, uh, I'm not normally doing this in singling out people, but you know what, some special things happened over the last few weeks, weeks. and one of them was a lady that phoned me the day before yesterday or sometime that said she registered for the Watchman School, but she knows me and I don't know her. I can't remember her. I said, who are you? So she said, no, my name is Runel. And I last saw you in uh, about almost 30 years ago. And then I discovered this lady uh, again after all these years. And she actually had a tremendous contribution in the life of me and Estelle. Uh, right before we started working at Jericho Walls Prayer Network in 1999. And uh, today, after so many years, I discovered her while she registered for the school. I didn't know, I don't think she knew <laughs> that we were also going to be here. <laughs> but there she is, uh, Runel. We just want to say thank you for being with us and for the investment that you made in our lives and uh, the joy of, of seeing that happen. So, um, and then we have some very special friends. Of course, there's a number of you that have been working with us for Summer Road uh, here. After all these years, you decided to come back to Rocklands for some reason. I don't know whether you need a holiday or something. But yeah, you are here. I know people like Elna, and don't forgive me for not repeating your names all. And Nadine that is here, she was my first secretary, one of my first secretaries at Jericho Walls here in Cape Town. And uh, then of course Lizette took over from her, was Lizette there at the back. And uh, yeah, there's quite a number of faces here. And then uh, just to introduce you officially, of course Estelle there in the corner is my wife, um, that you've heard about, I'm sure. And then um, the rest of the staff uh, is, of course, Lizette, who is um, the office manager slash PA slash uh, conference director, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> and uh, she does a lot of things uh, very quickly. And then uh, we have here, uh, we have Linda. And Anneri, you can stand. I don't know whether they've seen you at the registration table. Anneri is sitting here. She's our editor. She writes a lot of prayer material. If ever you thought of the timing and the things of the prayer material coming out, then you can witness with it that, that you agree with the prayer. It, she was the one that first prayed it, and then she wrote it, and only you are secondhand in line to receive it and pray it. <laughs> She's the one doing a lot of prayer material, apart, apart from Lizette and others. And then Linda here, Linda, Linda is from Pretoria. Please, you should welcome her very specially because uh, she has, uh, yeah, she's, she's working uh, at, from home and she's responsible for the website and the management of the website and all the kinds of things around that. And those of you that receive the newsletter monthly, she's uh, also in charge of that, many other things. And with this small team, they are keeping the, the work together. Uh, somehow the Lord is helping us. So um, apart from them also, I want to welcome um, John and Janine van der Merwe. They are sitting there, just wave a little bit, you guys. Um, they, uh, John is also on the board of Jericho Wells at the moment. He's representing the board here tonight. And then, uh, of course, their daughter, Shane, is, uh, is taking all the movies here in front. And um, yeah, she's been helping us. All the videos that you see come out of our offices. This is the one. She's the, it's her fault that it's uh, been going all the, that way. So um, yeah, thank you, Shane, for helping us. Um, and then we have a number of people from different uh, towns across the country, uh, and especially from Cape Town. Now, you must not think that we, uh, we arrange this like it. But we, uh, because of the COVID season and the spike of the air ticket prices, 
there was only about eight to ten people among you that came from the rest of the country. The others are all Kryptonians. The reason is they all came by bus, actually, and nobody flew in. And it can only be the prices of the flights. So, apart from that, there's a big contingent of Kryptonians here, but apart from them, we also have seven countries represented here. So we are very, very honored to have some of them. Uh, one or two of them still have to arrive. We are waiting for um, uh, Brother Anthony from um, Uganda and also Brother Harold Conway from uh, Zambia. But apart from them, we also have two ladies from Lesotho for the first time at the Watchman School. Uh, where are they? Malichaba and Tabiseng? Where are you? Malichaba and Tabiseng. Ah, uh, where are they? Hmm. Oh, we will come to the house rules, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry, Malichaba. And uh, are they not here? Oh my goodness, okay. But they are definitely here. I saw them at dinner. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. And then we have, um, we have uh, two gentlemen from Uganda. They arrived already. Bruno and Stanley, are they still on their way? Okay. And then uh, there is, um, is there anyone from Uganda that have arrived already? Okay, then, then Christella and uh, Pastor Pascal from Burundi. Yes, they arrived. Please welcome them. Please, you can stand. Yes. And then we have also, after many prayers, we have a brother from Pakistan with us. Where is he? Munawar. Oh my goodness, don't tell me that, eh? He's been raptured? No, <laughs> cannot be true. Where, where is this man? Okay, he's been traveling very far. But hey, he is here. I saw him with my own eyes. Yes, he's definitely here. And we will, uh, we will welcome him tomorrow morning again. So is there any other country representing it? Yeah, of course, of course. Yes, how can I forget about them? Um, so we have uh, two delegates from Nepal. It is the country which is the furthest away from Cape Town that we've ever had at the Watchman School. They are far up north onto the roof of the mountains of the Himalayas, and they are here. Can you believe that? This is um, Deepak. Deepak and Kiran. Deepak and Kiran. You will get to know them throughout a few days. Then we have a nice program for all of you. And there's the people from the north also. There's people from uh, PE that came, people from Pretoria, other places around the country. You are also welcome tonight. Is that, is that it? Anybody else who wants to be welcomed? Are you okay? <laughs> all right. <laughs> so then we will settle with that one then. Okay. So somebody asked me the other day, before I come to a short message for tonight, somebody asked me the other day, uh, you know, Daniel, you should not be so modest, man. Tell us something about Jericho Walls. We want to know where this thing is coming from. So let me just take a minute or two to do that. Um, Benny Mostert, Dr. Benny Mostert, started the, Jer the Jericho Walls prayer network way back in 1993, where a number of leaders from the mission movement came together across South Africa, and they sat down and discussed the possibility of having a prayer network. They felt that prayer needs to be on a higher agenda for the missions movement in the world. So they decided that they would start a prayer network with the name of Network for United Prayer for South Africa. And that's how it started. They asked Benny to, to, to uh, start it. And then, of course, Benny started his own uh, walk with the Lord in terms of prayer way back in 1976 when he was in, um, uh, was it Aranos? What is that place? Marintal, close to Marintal, um, in Namibia. He was uh, in the high school there and he started his first prayer group among the, the young uh, sons, the boys, yes. And they started praying. And quite a number of them actually came to the Lord at that stage. But that was his, sort of his first fruits of, of prayer and prayer mobilizing. 
And then, of course, 1993 came after he spent some years in the missions movement. And this is how uh, NUPSA was born. And then, of course, after a number of years, we started partnering with Global Day of Prayer in uh, 2001. And then the, the vision grew beyond South Africa's borders, and we changed the name to Jericho Walls International Prayer Network. And then came 1999, uh, January 1999, me and Estelle started working in Pretoria and um, full time. It was a, it was a real uh, faith step because uh, there was no uh, salary or any contribution involved in those days. You have to go seek for your, for your support like a missionary. And uh, so those were very interesting days where we saw the faithfulness of God in so many ways. And then um, we started in uh, September 2000, we started and launched the Global Prayer Watch here in uh, Belleville, in Durbanville, and a small prayer room where we started to pray on the 1st of September 2000. And uh, since then, other people join us like Nadine and them, and we started praying on a daily basis. I remember the early days, we were very much focused on all the needs of the world. So you were found when you walk into our prayer room, just newspaper clippings all over the wall. It was like crazy, all the things we wanted to pray for and change the world. But then the, at some point the Lord said, no, please, uh, you need to shift your focus a little bit. So then we shifted our focus more towards him than to the problems around us. And then we, t we transformed the whole prayer room into something that you will more, more look like a tabernacle. <laughs> and then we started praying and worshiping around that theme for quite a number of years. And then some people joined us full time, some young people. And for three years, we could pray 24 seven in that room. People came during the day from the community to pray. And at night we had a team, a young uh, team of young adults that was praying right through the night, uh, night hours, two hours by two hours. And uh, that's how we pray 24-7. We see some uh, main, amazing things happen during that time, which is quite, quite something uh, of how the Lord will, will move and how he will reveal his presence when prayer is uh, that intense. Yeah, so that is uh, what happened. And then, of course, Benny decided last year that he wants to step down from the leadership of Jericho Walls, and we had to take over. Um, 1st of August last year, so now it's just over a year now. And um, yeah, we have just witnessed the, um, the, just the faithfulness of God over the last, last year or so. Okay, so coming back to the Watchman School of Prayer. Yes, this is now 21 years. And tonight we are entering into this week of um, just seeking the face of God. Our theme is rising above the storm. Rising above the storm, I think all of us can actually experience this or have experienced this over the last two or three years, that there was really a storm raging. Uh, it was a storm that wanted your life and you had to deal with the realities of that and a storm that wanted to take out your family. And so here we are sitting today. We are still having many of us suffering from the consequences of the last two years. It's not an easy thing. Um, many of you that are sitting here whose lives have been touched by, by fellow family members who have gone, and, um, and you're still dealing with that. Um, one of the things that I feel the Lord wants to do this week is really just to bring some healing and restoration to your heart, and that you will really feel his presence here and his comfort. But rising above the storm is also about perspective and about seeing things the way God sees them. And I think um, if we could only see things the way God is looking at them, then we, wouldn't, don't, we will not have so many questions. And so I pray for you that the Lord will come with the spirit of revelation and wisdom and that he will teach us his ways. Teach us his ways that leads to his glory uh, and his heart for us. The key scripture of uh, this week, and uh, let me just say that this school has been, um, over the last number of years, has become a space um, where you could greatly benefit um, your prayer life. 
and life and empower you to spiritual breakthrough through sustainable day and night prayer. This is what we have seen, the Lord being birthed here in this place. A lives that were touched to a deeper prayer life with God and also empowerment to establish day and night prayer that would glorify the Lord in one or another way. Tonight I want to just, uh, as an introduction, just share with you the key scripture and a few thoughts around that. Um, the key scripture for this week is, is in Isaiah 60 verse 1. It says the following, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen on you. Something of this, of his glory, we need to realize that the glory of God has risen upon us. It is not yet, it is not yet in, our, in his fullness, but we must realize that the Lord has prophesied over us that we should stand up from the circumstances under which depression has kept us. You have to make a step of faith. If you feel downcast tonight and you feel depressed over the last season, you have to take a step of faith and say, Lord, I will arise. And then the Lord says, I want you to arise so that you will realize that my glory is upon you. Many times the glory is so strongly upon our lives, but we fail to realize it. We fail to experience it because our focus is just so crookedly skewed. And so we need to realize this. And then the Lord goes further and he says, the darkness shall cover the earth. It's a fact. It will come. It will increase even. But the Lord says, as in revival times, when my spirit comes in the midst of darkness... My glory shall be seen on you. No matter what the situation is around you, no matter how dark the situation becomes, we have faith in God that can change situations. We have faith in God that is in control of our destiny. He's in control of the destiny of nations. He says, why do the nations rage and plot weird things? The Bible says God laughs at them. In fact, he holds them in derision. They can't do as they like. And so it is with this scripture. There is something of God's glory he wants to reveal this week to you. And this is in the last of these days where God will come and his spirit will be resting on you as sons and daughters of the Most High God. And in these days where his glory will be seen, the evidence of his glory will be seen on you. The very manifestation of his presence. And you will notice it how? You will notice it as how God will answer your prayers. You will see the difference in the way that he answers your prayers. You will see it in the way how God reveals himself to you while you are praying. And so it is that we need to seek God in this time. Because this blessing of his glory only comes for those that seek him. Now, how does his glory operate? Firstly, I want to just touch on two things. The first one is probably what I would call the global prayer directives for this coming season that we are living in. These are simply situations in the world that is influencing the way that we pray about the world. And the first one that I want to touch on is natural disasters. This is something that we find to be very evident 
in the news and we're becoming more aware of these things, earthquakes and floods and droughts, etc. I'm sure you read all this stuff in the news. But the Bible also talks about these things happening. And in Isaiah 13, verse 13, it says, The Lord says, Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth will move out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. There is a point where God decides enough is enough. Have you heard this term before? Lately we heard this term a lot. Eh? When we think about ESCOM, we say enough is enough. But I believe there comes a point where God decides enough is enough. And he will do whatever it takes. He will do whatever it takes to draw the nations into his kingdom. If it is to put you as a nation under pressure to purify your faith, he will allow that to happen. If you are from a nation under pressure, God allows it to happen so that your faith can be purified and your witness can be pure. So Jesus can be glorified. So at the moment, everything is being shaken around us. Everything. Over the last number of years, you can almost n n name the things as they were falling apart. The whole of society is falling apart in many instances, in many ways. But at the end of the day, it's only that which is unshakable that will stand. So it's a day to remember your salvation. It's a day to stand in adversity. It's a day to behold the goodness of God. The second thing we see is political upheaval. Lots of political upheaval and instability around the world today. In fact, it's ethnic group against ethnic group. It's this group against that group. It's country against country, people group against people group. It's rich against poor, etc., etc. And to these days, you find this phenomenon of having a world war in one country. We have specific countries in the world that is at this point suffering because of the need and greed of other powerful nations around the world that would make that country their play playground. This is a grave injustice. May the Lord have mercy on those nations. But the Lord will laugh at them. It says in Psalm 2 verse 4, He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. This is the God that we serve. You don't want to be the enemy of this God. The third thing that we have seen recently is what we would probably call in spiritual terms the changing of the guard or a change in leadership. In the world we see a shift towards women becoming presidents of countries. It's just uh, one of those shifts. And on the other hand, we are seeing a, a shift of leadership, a change of leadership. People, the leaders stepping down from even very prominent ministries around the world. So we have seen recently the, um, the ministry of YWAM that have handed out changed leadership uh, since the founder has founded it many years ago. Lauren Cunningham, the founder of YWAM has handed over in a, in a large way his leadership to new leadership in YWAM globally. The second biggest mission movement in uh, the world, Operation Mobilization, have changed leadership. Also from the founder. 
or 30, 40 years ago. And have now also changed. Even nationally, they have a new leader now that started last year. Jericho Walls, we also changed last year, if you will. And the Global Day of Prayer was handed over uh, by Graham Power to a new ministry called Global Voice of Prayer, run by Anya Letzatsi. So these are shifts that are taking place into new leadership. And I see specifically the founders of the last 30 years have established amazing networks of, of kingdom work around the world. Um, but they are now handing over leadership. So it's a totally new ball game for new leadership to take over from a ministry that have been started by a founder. So prayer, we need to pray for leadership in this day. Very much so, many of these leaders have passed on. Billy Graham was responsible for saving the lives into the kingdom of millions of people around the world. He went to be with the Lord in 2019, just the other day. The Queen of England left for her place in the kingdom. She was, for many, the, the symbolic leadership of the church. And she really served the Lord and served these purposes for many years. Then there was also a man like Floyd McClung, who was a very strong leader in the missions movement, also went to be with the Lord. And more locally, there was a, a person by the name of Jocelyn Klute. She visited this house of prayer many times, from Klute's, uh, from um, Club Mets here in Cape Town. And she left to be with the Lord a few months ago. Amazing lady, evangelist with a passion for day and night prayer. She had her own prayer room running. Another person also connected to this house was uh, Auntie Minnie Cunningham that left for the Lord also recently. And a strong woman of prayer and how the Lord used her even in the lives of, of church leaders around the city. And then only yesterday, it was Ruzan Fisahi, a prominent lady from a prominent family in South Africa who lived here in the West Coast. She was a strong evangelist, a woman of prayer, but she had a third run of, of cancer. And uh, then the Lord, the Lord came to fetch her uh, just yesterday. Then the fourth thing is a radicalized youth. Now, I don't want to say much about this, but I want to say that the Lord is looking after the fatherless. There is a huge gap when it comes to fathers and children. Even fathers and, and mothers also, but fathers and children is a big problem. Why is it a problem? Because son, uh, fatherless children grow up without identity. And most cases, they don't realize that they're without the identity. But they have these qualities of shame and guilt and fear and doubt that comes to rest on their lives like a blanket. And they struggle with issues like that. The only reason, the only chance in life they really have for lifting them out of this situation is the love of the Father. If God the Father reveals himself to these lost children in this generation and they can receive his love and his identity, they will change this world. The Bible says in uh, Psalm 68 verse 5, a father of the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy habitation. God sets the solitary in families. He even place those fatherless ones with families so they can have a father. It's the God doing these things. He brings out those who are bound into prosperity. Have we heard of stories recently? 
of fatherless children who got just this huge opportunity in life and they just went like a rocket through through the through society as the Lord's favor rested upon them. Have you heard these stories? Amazing. Uh, one after another, the Lord just raised these people up out of poverty. They come out of the worst situation at home and the Lord lifts them up and takes them by hand and he makes them to prosper. It's just incredible what God can do with a fatherless person who has no chance in life. Then the fifth one is food, water, energy, and the energy shortage in the world. It's a fact that there is a lot of food crisis and water crisis coming to an end, uh, near, near crisis in the future, and also the energy shortage for many different re reasons. But these things are realities. This part of the things that Jesus spoke about that will happen in the last days. Now, I don't want to go into it, I just want to say you will feel that it's a lot more than before. And one of the reasons is because information is exploding around the world. Social media is just everything you will find happening in the world, you can find it on social media. So things, we are more aware of things than before. But in spite of that, there seems to be an increase in these kind of things happening. Floods become more intense in intensity droughts becoming more severe and so we see a few other examples of these things happening. Ukraine has a very positive story around this issue. We had a week of prayer <coughs> a few months ago which we had the theme of uh, our daily bread, some of you might remember. And the focus there was to pray for the food shortage, which was specifically a crisis at that point with the grain that was caught up in the Ukraine and many countries would have gone very much poor right now if it wasn't for the grain. They were so totally dependent, countries like Egypt and others. And we prayed that week, we prayed all over Africa, we prayed 24-7 for the Lord to, re uh, to come and release that grain. There was 20 million tons of grain caught up in the, in the harbor of Odessa at that very point in time. Three days after the week of prayer, a treaty was signed, an agreement between the warring parties that they will allow, th will allow those ships to out of the harbor. And the first ship left. And the other 15 plus left soon after that. With the grain that was needed to save people's lives in places like Egypt. That is justice. That is God intervening, intervening and giving justice to us in that situation. And then six, number six is reconciliation, forgiveness, and repentance. And with this kind of trend that is happening, and there's been a ministry of a very few prominent people in South Africa that have been walking a road of reconciliation, repentance, and forgiveness since before 1994. And they are still doing it. During... Um, during uh, our week of prayer we had the other day where we, we called it uh, Nations Redeemed. We had seven nations in Europe praying for seven nations in Africa. The nations that was responsible for sending the gospel to the nations in Africa. And we had the nations in Africa that responded by praying for them. And so we had 24 hour prayer groups running all over the place from uh, between Africa and Europe. And they prayed specifically for reconciliation between these nations. Because they were also the same country that brought the gospel, is the same country that brought colonization to, this, to the continent. But there we focused on the salvation and we said, Lord, what are you doing in these nations? Let us agree with you in prayer. And so this happened. After that week of prayer, the Dutch government decided that they need to repent for the slavery involvement in Africa. And they will issue a formal statement around that, and they will also issue or establish a fund of restitution for the people in Africa. This is reconciliation. So we are seeing these things happening from time to time, God raising up a standard against all these kind of things happening. And then seventh, 
place is prayer, of course. Prayer growing in capacity and in numbers. So we see individuals rising up as houses of prayer. These people, they can't get enough of prayer. They will leave the fellowship with their favorite pastor and they will go to their prayer closets. Because that's where they want to be, first and foremost. And then we get others. We get numbers of people praying. We have a whole 24-7 uh, movement where people, before COVID, they prayed one hour a week. Suddenly, through COVID, the intensity of prayer became so much, and we expanded so that now people pray one hour per day. Those of us, those of you that are involved in 24-7, you will know this is happening. After COVID, the momentum of prayer has come down a little bit, but it's still way higher than it was before COVID. And so um, I need to close now. I want to close with these few verses in Hebrews 1 to 3. When we talk about the glory of God, which will be a high uh, topic for this week, when we talk about the glory of God, what, can, what is the glory of God? How do we define the glory of God? And one of the uh, key definitions of this is the following. The glory of God is the visible manifestation of God's character. The visible manifestation of God's character. In Exodus 33, you will read the story of how Moses had a very intimate relationship with God. He spoke to God as a friend. God allowed him to speak to him like a friend. And then he tells the story of how he spoke to God and he asked the Lord to show him his glory. And God says, no, you can't see my face and live. It's impossible. But I will hide in the cleft of the rock, and you can come by at some point, and then you can, you can look and you will, show, you will see my backside. And you will see my goodness. And the only way they could describe the glory of God in words was to say that his goodness passed him by. His goodness, his loving kindness, his grace, his compassion. That's what the glory looks like if you can see in the spirit. So when we pray that the glory of God will fill the earth as the waters covers the sea, if we pray for the glory of God to come upon your life, we are praying for the very character and nature of God to transform your life so that people will look in, at you and say, this must be Jesus. And so that can be our desire for this week that the Lord will come with his glory and transform us and then in Hebrews 1 verse 3 where Jesus is the ultimate object of God's glory and it says about Jesus he being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and he upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, etc. This is the one. This is the pure reflection of God's glory. And then in, um, in the next uh, verse, and let me close with this one. Um, in 2 Corinthians 3, uh, where the, you can meditate on this scripture for the rest of the week. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 17 and 18. 17 says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Um, 2 Corinthians 3, 18 says, But we all, with unveiled face, unveiled face, meaning the veil has been lifted from your eyes. You are able to see. Beholding as in a mirror the glory of God, even though you can see, when it comes to God, you can only see like in a mirror. Beholding what's in the mirror, the glory of God, as are being transformed into the same image of God. As you look into the mirror, the same image of God. 
And the more you look, the more you become like God. Have you ever seen these babies? When they look into their mother's eyes, day after day, night after night, they just stare at the mother's face, or touch the mother's face like this, and look, touch the nose and all these things. You know this too? You've seen this before? Yes? How yeah, many of you have seen this? So, and then they sort of become, I want to be like my mom. Oh, then my nose must be like this. Ear must be like this. Yeah. So then we become like the Father as we gaze upon him. So, let me close with this last scripture in Matthew 5, 14 and 15, and I will say Selah for the rest. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Father, we thank you for this evening. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us to this space where we can once again just come and dedicate our lives to you. Just surrender everything, Lord. And Holy Spirit, will you remind us of these things as we intentionally set our minds upon being transformed in your likeness, Jesus. Lord, we want to be like you. We want to reflect the glory of God as revealed through the fruit of the Spirit of God and the character and nature of God. And so I pray for the saints here tonight that you will visit us this week. Holy Spirit, will you come and cleanse us by the blood of Jesus. Purify our hearts so that our words will, will reflect something of the glory of God. Please let your blessing rest upon us. And let your glory increase upon the house as we continue in this week. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. We thank you so much. Amen. Well, tomorrow morning we will uh, be back at um, 9 o'clock. And uh, for those online, um, you will receive the sessions of every day the next morning. It will be posted on YouTube and the link will be posted to your group. So please watch out for the link and then you can join in with us. Thank you so much for joining and may the Lord bless you in this week to come.